Hi everyone, it's Professor Pripson. In this video, we're going to talk about subtraction with real numbers. So in the previous video, we talked about addition with real numbers. Now we're going to change our topic to subtraction. So let's talk about an example where subtraction of negative numbers or sign numbers would come in. So suppose that you're on a trip in the mountains during the middle of the winter. At noon of the first day of your trip, the outside temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. But by dinner time, the temperature had fallen or dropped to 2 degrees Fahrenheit. And then by midnight, it had reached negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to figure out in this section how to subtract real numbers, positive real numbers and also negative real numbers, so that we can figure out how much does the temperature actually drop from noon until midnight during the trip. So in this section, we're going to talk about subtraction of any combination of positive and negative numbers. We're going to translate sentences from English into symbols and then also simplify and then also talk about the complement and supplement of an angle. So let's start by talking about subtracting positive and negative numbers. Since we want as few number of rules as possible, it's really convenient to talk about subtraction in terms of addition. So that's what we're going to do in this section. If you want to subtract one real number from another, you basically add the opposite of the number. So what that means is that if you want A and B be real numbers, if you want A subtract B, you can add the opposite of B with A. This is always going to be true. So you can always change subtraction problems to addition problems. So in the last section we talked about addition of real numbers. We can just change all the problems that we talked about in this section to addition problems and then use the rules from the last section. So let's start with example one. Subtracting real numbers. Simplify each of the following expressions involving subtraction of real numbers. So eight subtract 13. So we're gonna change this first into an addition problem. This is eight plus the opposite of positive 13. So now remember the rules from the previous section. If you have addition of real numbers and they are opposite signs, you subtract the numbers, so you'll, we'll subtract 13, subtract 8, and get 5. But now we have to keep the sign of the larger number in absolute value. So the absolute value of 8 is 8, but the absolute value of negative 13 is positive 13, and that's larger, so the answer will be negative. It's the sign of the larger number in absolute value. All right, let's try number 2. Negative 8 subtract 13. Again, let's change this to an addition problem. Negative 8 plus negative 13. So now notice that this is an addition problem and both numbers have the same sign. So the rule was if you have the same sign and you're adding, you add the two numbers together. So 8 plus 13 is 21. But now you keep the sign that they have in common. And they're both negative. So you keep the negative when you're adding real numbers. Okay? Number 3. Negative 13 subtract negative 8. Well, this becomes negative 13 the opposite of subtracting 8 is adding 8. So now we have an addition problem, negative 13 plus 8. They're opposite signs, so subtract. So you get 5, and then keep the sign of the larger number, so it will be negative 5. Okay, and then the last one, 13 subtract negative 8 becomes 13 plus 8. And then 13 plus 8 is 21, and you keep the sign positive because 13 and 8 were both positive. So in each of these four examples, each of these four problems, we are using the same rules as we did in the last section. So keep in mind, if the numbers are the same sign, Then add the numbers, and keep the sign. On the other hand, if the numbers have different signs, Then subtract the numbers
and keep the sign of the larger number. So those are exactly the same rules that we learned in the previous section. Okay, And then just like I said earlier, since this entire section is talking about a subtraction of real numbers, we can always change subtraction to in terms of adding the opposite. So that's what we're going to be doing in this entire section. It's much easier to use the rules that we already know than creating new rules. Alright, example two. This time we're going to add and subtract real numbers. So we're going to have the addition and subtraction in the same problem. So simplify each of the following expressions involving addition and subtraction of real numbers. So number one, 4 plus negative 2, subtract 3. So again, if we're subtracting, we're going to change this to an addition problem, but adding the opposite of the number. So plus negative 2, that's okay, because that's an addition problem already. Subtract 3 is really adding negative 3. So now, let's work our way from left to right with addition and subtraction. So 4 plus negative 2, they're opposite signs, so I subtract the numbers, and I keep the sign of the 4 because 4 is bigger than 2. So this becomes 2 plus negative 3. And then again, these are opposite signs, 2 and negative 3, so I subtract. 3 subtract 2 is 1, but I keep the negative because 3 is larger than 2. Okay, number 2. 9 subtract 4, and then also subtract 5. So this is two subtractions in the same problem. Let's change it to two additions. So you have 9 plus the opposite of 4 plus the opposite of 5. So again, do this one at a time from left to right. 9 plus negative 4, they're opposite signs. So subtract. You get positive 5 because 9 is larger. You get the positive. And then plus negative 5. 5 plus negative 5, that's 0. Okay, number 3. Negative 3, subtract. Negative 5 plus 1, then subtract 6. So, first thing we're going to do is simplify using the order of operations. So you have negative 3, subtract, you get inside the parentheses is negative 5 plus 1, that is negative 4, because they're opposite signs again, subtract and keep the sign on the negative 5, which is negative, because it's bigger, and then subtract 6. So now let's change any subtraction problems into addition problems, you have negative 3, Subtracting the opposite of 4 is adding positive 4. And then subtracting 6 is adding the opposite of 6. Okay, same as the last two problems. Do order of operations, which is adding from left to right. So negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1 plus negative 6. And then opposite signs, so subtract and you get negative 5. Okay, one more. Negative 8, subtract parentheses 5 minus 6 plus negative 7. So again, work on what's inside the parentheses first, according to the order of operations. So negative 8, subtract. Inside the parentheses is 5, subtract 6. That's negative 1. So they're positive 5 and negative 6, opposite signs. So make sure you subtract. And then this one's already addition, so it can keep it the same. Add negative 7. So just like the last problem, if you're subtracting negative 1, that's really adding positive 1. So negative 8, plus 1, plus negative 7. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. And then also add another negative 7. So this time they are the same sign. Negative 7 and negative 7. So you add the numbers and you keep the sign that they have in common. So you get negative 14. In the next example we're going to figure out how to do multiplication and exponents as well as addition and subtraction of real numbers. So again, keep in mind the order of operations. Make sure you do grouping or parentheses first, then exponents are second, multiplication and division from left to right, and then addition and subtraction is last, but also from left to right. So example three, order of operations. Simplify each of the following expressions using the order of operations. So number one, you have three times two raised to the fourth power, subtract five times three, subtract four raised to the second power, or four squared, times 2. So there's no grouping in the problem, so let's go straight to exponents. So you have 3 times 2 raised to the fourth power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. Subtract 5 times 3. Subtract 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. And then you have times 2. 
So that takes care of all the exponents. So now, now let's go to the multiplication from left to right. 3 times 16 is 48. Subtract. 5 times 3 is 15. Subtract. 16 times 2 is 32. So now we're back to a problem that we were talking about in like an example 2. So let's change all the subtractions to additions. So this becomes 48 plus negative 15 plus negative 32. 48 plus negative 15, they're opposite signs. So subtract, you get 33. Because 48 is bigger, you keep the positive sign. And then you want to add negative 32. So it's 32 plus negative 32 is positive 1. Okay, one more. Number 2, you have negative 3 times negative 4 in parentheses squared. Subtract 2 raised to the third power times 6. Subtract parentheses, 7 minus 2, all in parentheses, that's being squared, then times 4. All right, so let's do the order of operations. Make sure you do parentheses first. So any operations inside the parentheses, nothing with a negative 4, so let's skip that. 7 minus 2, that has an operation inside the parentheses when you do that first. So negative 3, negative 4 squared. Keep everything else the same. We'll just worry about that parentheses. 7 minus 2 inside the parentheses becomes positive 5, which is squared, times 4. Okay, next step. We've done all the parentheses, so now let's move on to exponents. You have negative 4 in parentheses squared, so that's negative 4 times negative 4. That's positive 16, so negative 3 times positive 16, minus 2 to the third power. Now that negative is not with the 2. It's saying subtract whatever you get when you do 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So we're going to be subtracting 8 times 6. Then, same thing again. This negative is outside the parentheses, so it's really just saying 5 squared. 5 squared is 5 times 5, or 25. And then times 4 at the end. Negative 3 times 16 is negative 48. Minus 8 times 6 is 48. And then 25 times 4 is 100. So notice that this has subtraction in the problem, so let's change those to addition. So negative 48 plus negative 48. And then subtract means plus negative 100. So we have negative 48 plus negative 48 plus negative 100. That is negative 48 plus negative 48 is negative 96. They have the same sign, so add the numbers, 48 and 48 is 96, and keep the sign they have in common. And then plus negative 100. Again, same sign. Add the numbers, keep the sign they have in common. So negative 196. So let's talk about writing words in symbols. There's going to be some problems that don't tell you the operation straight away. They may be using words like some difference in this section. So in the next example, we're going to practice translating a word problem into an algebraic expression, and then we can actually evaluate it. So example four, translate English into operations. Translate the following sentences into symbols for operations with real numbers. So number one, find the difference of eight and six. So the key word here is difference. Difference is the key word for the operation subtraction. So now subtraction, the order is very important because if we had 8 subtract 6, the answer will be 2. But if we have 6 subtract 8, the answer is negative 2. So the order is very important with subtraction. So if they say find the difference of 8 and 6, they mean 8 subtract 6, which is, if we translate this into an addition problem, would be 8 plus negative 6. Opposite signs, subtract. Keep the positive answer because the 8 was bigger than 6. So we translated this word problem into mathematical expression 8 subtract 6, which gives you 2. Okay, number 2. Find the difference of 3 and negative 5. So again, difference means subtraction. So again, the order is important. 8 and then 6, 3 and then negative 5. So it's 3 subtract negative 5 which becomes 3 plus 5, because you're subtracting a negative, you actually add a positive. 
and so 3 plus 5 is 8. So the difference of 3 and negative 5 is 8. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about in this section is what's called complementary and supplementary angles. So if you've studied geometry before, there's 360 degrees in a full rotation, or in a circle there's 360 degrees. So if you have the center of the circle, the distance from the center to the out of the outer edge of the circle is called the radius. So this distance is the radius of the circle. For the radius to make one full rotation, that would be 360 degrees. So what we can do is we can use our knowledge of algebra to help us solve geometric related problems. So that's what we're going to do next, but we have to talk about complementary and supplementary angles first. So the definition of complementary and supplementary angles. If two angles add to make a 90 degree angle, or a 90 degree angle is called a right angle. So if you have two angles that, that add to give you a right angle, they are called complementary angles. Okay. On the other hand, if you have two angles that can add to give you 180 degrees, or that would be a half turn of a circle, then the two angles are called supplementary angles. So here's an example of complementary. So if you have two angles that form a right angle, a right angle is 90 degrees, and you'll see a little box or a corner representing 90 degrees. So this gives you a right angle. If you have two angles, Let's call this one x, and this angle will be y. If you have two angles together, when you add them up, when you add them up, that gives you 90 degrees, then they're complementary. So x plus y is 90 degree angle. So x and y are complementary angles. Okay, on the other hand, if you have 180 degrees, 180 degrees would just be a straight line. Two angles that add up to 180 degrees is supplementary. So let's say one angle is here, that's x. The other angle is here, and that's y. If you add these two angles measurements up, you get 180 degrees. So that means x and y supplementary angles. So that's what it means to be complementary and supplementary. Complementary 90 degrees, supplementary 180 degrees. So example 5, we're going to find out what the value of x is that's representing the measurement of an angle. So complementary and supplementary angles determine the value of x in each of the following angle diagrams. So number 1, you have this angle that forms a right angle, a 90 degree angle. So these two angles, x and 30 degrees, are complementary angles. Which means, if you take the measurement of angle x and you add 30 degrees, you will get 90 degrees when you add them together. Well, what angle, if you add to 30 degrees, gives you 90 degrees? This means, or implies, that x must be 60 degrees. So the complementary angle to 30 would be 60. Okay, And then number two, notice that these two angles, angle x and angle 45 degrees, is a straight line. So these are supplementary angles. So that means if you take the measurement of angle x and you add 45 degrees, it should be 180 degrees. So what angle do you need to add to 45 degrees to get 180 degrees? So you could do subtraction. 180 degrees subtract 45 degrees means x must be 135 degrees. So 135 degrees and 45 degrees are supplementary angles. 
So we're going to finish up this section by just talking about what does it mean by subtraction of real numbers. So if this is the first time you're taking algebra, subtracting real numbers can get pretty confusing, especially since you're subtracting positive numbers sometimes and you're subtracting negative numbers the other times, and then other times you're adding positives and sometimes you're adding negatives. So negative 5 subtract 9, is this negative 14? Is this negative 4? Could it be positive 4? I've seen several different answers when I've taught this in the past. Well, keep in mind, you are subtracting here. It's negative 5, subtract 9 more. So if you owe someone $5, and then you owe them another 9, you really owe them negative $14. So sometimes it might be helpful to take a mathematical expression like this, negative 5 minus 9, translate into something that can be more familiar to you. So if someone owes $5 and someone owes $9, they really owe $14 total not 4 and not negative 4. So that's one way you can think about subtraction problems. You can translate them into uh, more real-life problems. Otherwise, if you're subtracting real numbers, you can still use the rules that we talked about in the previous video. So if you're subtracting two numbers, change it to an addition problem. Then you can use the rules. If a and negative b have the same sign, then you add them and keep the sign they have in common. Otherwise, if they are opposite signs, then you subtract the numbers and you keep the sign of the larger number in absolute value. So this finished up our video on subtracting real numbers. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions about any of the problems in the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And in the next video, we'll talk about multiplication and division of real numbers.